Welcome to the next video on the Boolean algebra and in this video we're going to look at simple truth tables. Now before we start to look at examples I'd like to talk a little bit about why do we use the truth tables and what are these truth tables for. Now we use the truth tables because these are simple visual representation of what an actual Boolean expression can do. So, for example, you have a Boolean expression combining together two or three input values and then you want to know what are all of those different combinations the Boolean expression can take as an input combination and you would want to know what is the corresponding output for every single one of those combinations. So, a Boolean expression using the truth table can really easily show you all of those different combinations. Now, how do we construct the truth table? Well, a truth table, which you have seen in the previous video in the most basic cases, is just showing you the input combinations in the columns and then breaking the complex Boolean expression down into its constituent parts and then combining those parts together according to different operations that take place in the actual expression. Now, depending on how many inputs we have, you can use the following rule to establish how many combinations of inputs you can have. Well, every input can be true or false or zero or one. So that gives you two possible input values. Now, depending on how many different input values you have, that will be two to a certain power. So, for example, if I have got two different input values, let's say P and Q, then the possible combination of these input values will be 2 to the 2, which is 4. If I have got three input values, let's say P, Q and R, then the possible combination of all of these input values will be 2 to the 3, which is 8. So how can we build up the start of our truth table for these two combinations? If I, let's say, have two input values, P and Q, I know that I will have to end up with four combinations of these. Now, every one of these inputs can be true or false. Now, half of four is two, so if I place down two trues, two falses, and then just alternating twos and falses, then I will have all the four different combinations without repeating any of them. Well, it might be too obvious for the two combinations, but let's see what happens if we have three combinations. So let's say if I had P, Q and R as my input combinations. Well, half of 8 is 4, so I can put down 4 trues and 4 falses. Then I can put down 2 trues two forces, two trues, two forces alternatingly, and then just one true, one force until I fill up the whole table. Now, opposed to the two combinations, which is relatively simple because you can just follow through, okay, both of them can be true, both of them can be false, or one true, one false. When it comes to the three combinations, that starts to become a little bit more complicated. So if you don't remember this simple rule, you might end up repeating one or the other of the rows in this combination, which would end up you producing the wrong or incomplete truth table for your exercise. Another important thing when it comes to these truth tables is to being able to break down these different expressions. So let's say that you have got a complicated expression P and not Q or P. Now what's going on in here? Well I have got brackets just like in Bodmas I'm using the brackets to rearrange the order of operations. So the brackets will tell me that I need to combine the inputs of P and not Q before I can apply the OR operation. So that straight away tells me that the priority to be able to calculate things first will need to happen in the inside the bracket. 
Now inside the bracket I have got P and not Q. To be able to combine them together I will need to know the values of P which I can just start from the uh, beginning of the table and the not Q. Now when I'm building up the table I will have P and Q input values therefore I will need to calculate the not Q first to be able to combine P and not Q together. Once I've got not Q combined it together with P using the AND operation then I can combine that partial output with the OR and the P. Now let's see how does it work in practice. So P Q NOT Q P AND NOT Q and P AND NOT Q OR P. So these are the different input values that I need to be able to calculate before I will end up with the final answer. So I've only got P and Q, I've only got two different letters in my expression, therefore I'm going to use only two of those combinations. And the truth values to start with are going to be true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, what does the not do to an input? True turns into false, false turns into true. So that's what happens if I apply the NOT operation to the Q. What I need to do next, I need to pick up the NOT Q and I need to combine that together with the P using the AND operation. And this is why you need to remember what every single one of these different operations do because you need to be able to apply them to certain situations. So TRUE and FORCE makes it false, true and true makes it true, false and false makes a false and false and true makes a false. So now I have got answers to this operation for each of the different combinations but that's not my final goal because my final goal is to have the answer for this operation. So for that what I need to do is pick up this, which is this part, and I need to use the OR operation and combine it together with P again. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to look at these two input values and using the rules of the OR operation. TRUE OR FORCE gives me TRUE, TRUE OR TRUE gives me TRUE, FORCE OR FORCE gives me FORCE, FORCE OR FORCE gives me FORCE. What have I found? What I found is that what is this operation does to every possible input combinations of P and Q? What will be the output? So if both of them are true, the output will be true. If P is true, Q is false, the output will be true. But in the other two cases, when P is false and Q is true, the output, overall output will be false and if both of them are false, the overall output will be false. So with this combination, I have been able to filter out these two first input values. I'm letting those go through this combination and these two I'm going to stop. Remember, that these input values are always, you can think about them always like electric circuits. Do I let the signal go through or do I not? And for some reasons it's important for me to only allow these two signals combinations through and stop these two signals. Let's look at another example. P and Q X or P. Again I've only got two different letters, P and Q, so the overall different inputs, just P and Q. So I'm going to have just a combination of two. Again, the truth table will be true, true, false, false, or true, false, true, false. Now, when I'm looking at the expression, 
what are the different inputs that I need to combine together first before I can calculate the overall output. Now there is an XOR gate, but there is a bracket. Bracket is my priority, just like in BODMAS, so I need to calculate the P and Q first before I can apply the P and Q X or P. So the XOR gate will be the final operation that I'm going to use in here. So for P and Q, simply just use the AND operation. The AND operation only returns true if both of them are true. In every other cases, the AND will be false. And the XOR. What do I know about the XOR? The XOR is to distinguish between the signals being the same, both true, both false, or the signals being different, one true, one false. And only letting true when the signals are actually different. That's why it's called exclusive or it's exclusively one or the other. So what do I need to look? But the first input will be the combination that we just calculated. And the other one is the P. So P and this combination is the same. So the exclusive OR returns false. P and the combination is different, so the exclusive OR gives you true. These are again the same, so it returns a false. And these are again the same, so it again returns a false. So again, what have we found? We know that P and Q can take all these different input combinations and the expression, which is using P and Q X or P, will return these output values. The interesting thing about this expression is that it only lets through one combination, the true force combination. It stops every other combination. So you can see it, you can use these combinations of different operations of filtering out certain inputs and only allowing th to go through one type of input. The next expression, P or Q, if then Q. So how many different letters do I have? I only have P and Q, so this two table again just going to have two input combinations. The start will be again true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, try to break down the expression. There is a bracket again that ties me the priority, so I will need to find the P or Q first before I can use the if-then operation. So, P or Q, both of them are true, so this will be true. One of them is true, this will be true. Both of them are false, this will be false. So that was very simple. But how about the if then? Well, just to make sure that we remember what if then is, let's recall the truth table of the if then. True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, what does the if then do? If both of them are true, if then returns true. If A is true but B is false, if then returns false. If A is false but B is true, the if then returns true. And if both of them are false, the if then again returns a true. So this is one of the more difficult tables to remember, so I suggest that you learn it very well. So back to our original table. What are the two inputs that we need to look into? Now this one is my A and this one is my B. So if A is true and B is true, the if then returns are true. If a is true, but B is false, the if then returns a false. If both of them are true, if then returns a true, 
and if both of them are false, which is the last case in here, the if then again returns are true. In the next video, we will look at few more simple examples, but for now, I have a couple of practice questions for you. You will find the answers to these questions at the end of the video. So these are the practice questions. And here are the answers.